So if you're comfortable, you can uh, put your videos on so that I should be able to see you how uh, is the position of the candle and everything. It is dark. Is it okay now? Yeah, right now uh, you can put the lights in the room. Okay. I will leave uh, instructions closer to the time when to switch off the lights. All right, so we'll start the session with prayer. Uh, it is one of the Shanti mantras, and uh, I'm going to chant it in a Vedic style. So you can just uh, sit comfortably and listen to the mantra. You can sit on the floor, on the chair, whichever way you are comfortable. Place your palms on your knees. Keep your back straight. Gently close your eyes. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Hunaktu Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejasvinavati Tamas Doma Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Try to feel the vibrations of mantra within. Gently brush your palms on each other. Try to make them warm enough. Place them on your eyes to feel the warmth. Let the warmth transfer from your palms to your eyes. Give it Gentle massage all over your face and with few blinks, open your eyes. Okay, so before uh, starting with the practice, we'll discuss what Trataka is all about uh, and then uh, maybe for first five to ten minutes and then we'll begin with the practice. So as the name suggests, uh, Trataka is uh, one of the cleansing techniques. That is Shat Karmas or Shat Kriyas coming from Hatha Yoga. So in the morning class, uh, I have just explained uh, in the morning itself that there are six types of cleansing techniques for our body and mind. In some of the cleansing techniques, we use water. Uh, some of the cleansing techniques, there is a medium of air. So like Dhauti, Basti, Neti, uh, Tratak, Kapal Bhati. Uh, so in uh, out of these six, today we are going to focus on Trataka. So what is Trataka? Trataka is basically to uh, fix your vision, your eyesight on one point. Now that one point can be anything. You can use a black dot on a, a plain surface or it can be flame of a candle or it can be any uh, you know, auspicious object. It can be Shiva Linga or the picture of Rama, Krishna. Any such object where you are going to focus your vision, your eyesight. So what that means, so whenever you fix your, uh, one of the sense organ, that is eyes, your automatically mind gets fixed on that object. Hmm? As uh, we have discussed in the morning that uh, how breath and mind are closely related. If your mind is stressed out, you're anxious, it reflects on your breath. Uh, it affects the pattern of your breathing. It becomes faster. It becomes uh, haphazard. It becomes very shallow. And eventually that affects your body. So similarly, when your mind is anxious, restless, it also reflects in your eyes. Maybe next time 
uh, have that awareness and consciously observe the state of your eyes, how your eyes are moving, how your eyes are blinking. So you cannot focus your vision uh, for a long time or at particular uh, or maybe at, in your work. So there is a close relation between your sense organs and mind. In fact, uh, mind is called as the sixth sense organ. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, uh, shloka number 7, uh, Krishna says, Manaha Shashthani Indriyani. It is your sixth sense. But this mind is so subtle and it's so complex and it's so... Uh, you know, against our will that it's very difficult to control. So in yogic tradition, what our great seers, yogis and rishis have uh, done and guided us, leave the mind. Do not control the mind because it is very naughty. Hmm? So what we can do? Control either your breath or Control your sense organs. Now, we have got five jnani indriyas, that is, uh, organ of perception. There are eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Out of these five senses, uh, eyes is the most complex organ. Means after brain in our body, we can say eyes are the most complex sense organs. It has got so many uh, micro movements that we can't even imagine. And it is one of the most important sense organs because just imagine if we don't have eyes, 80% of the information from the external world, we cannot have it. Correct? See, for um, to taste something, that object should come in contact with the sense organ, isn't it? Something to touch or feel, that object should come in contact with the skin. But for eyes, it is not necessary. Even the things are away or they are spread out, at a glance, lot of information enters in. And due to that, your mind gets distracted. Because of it is necessary to have these sense organs, but at a, uh, you know, in a per second, we cannot imagine how much of information is coming in through the eyes, through this sense uh, organ. And hence, Trataka plays a very important role where it teaches us, condition our uh, sense organ that you are not going to uh, look or you are going to avoid all other things and just focus your eyesight, your vision on one single object. Now imagine how much of distraction can be reduced at mental level. See, you, we are constantly nowadays, we are constantly on mobiles on computer, on one of the gadgets, all the time. There are hundreds of WhatsApp groups. We are either on Facebook, Insta, WhatsApp, and we cannot imagine how much of, you know, eyes are looking at so many videos, information, we are reading so many things, and there are thousands of opportunities. We only are giving ourselves for the distraction of mind. Imagine you shut down all these things. Just fix your eyes, your vision on one point, on one object. Will that help to reduce distractions at mental level, emotional level? Definitely yes. So uh, that is how Jnanendriya plays very important role, sense organs play very important role in gaining control over the mind. 
okay and in today's practice we are going to experience that that if we can fix our sight on one of the object can we reduce distractions of the mind can we make our mind one pointed because trataka is act as pratyahara in raja yoga there are eight steps yama niyama asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi so up till uh, pranayama yama niyama asan pranayam it is bahiranga yoga yoga of external uh, things pratyahara comes in the middle it acts as a bridge and then comes dharana dhyan samadhi that is called as antaranga yoga so trataka can be called as pratyahara because it's going to help to withdraw our senses in world have you ever looked at a tortoise uh it just takes his legs head everything inside its hard shell same thing we have to do with our senses act like a tortoise withdraw all the senses we cannot shut the ears but there are certain mudras in yogic tradition uh, like shambhavi mudra shanmukhi mudra we can uh, try to even close the ears making your uh, senses completely like you know uh, divert them inward and your mind is automatically calm down and that calm state of mind will give you the opportunity to divert your consciousness your awareness in world and that is the first step of dharana don't even think about doing dhyana meditation because there are very advanced practices even at the beginning we are successful in withdrawing our senses and fixing of uh, making it fix on one point we have done a great job all right so uh, let's begin with the practice um, before starting prataka there are certain uh, instructions like uh, if you are having a cataract or any eye uh, disease or disorder you have to take a lot of care uh, in in fact having cataract you cannot practice trataka with the flame of the candle but you can use any object which is not illuminated so maybe a dark spot or any other object which you feel that you can easily concentrate on um uh, you are not going to strain your eyes so basically in the practice of trataka what is expected is not to blink your eyes so you are going to use your will power that i am not going to blink my eyes that shows the you know how much control or will you have but again you are not forcing yourself as you are maybe doing it for the first time even you uh, blink your eyes that's okay but it is uh general practice that we should avoid blinking the eyes and it is a good sign if tears come out so that uh, makes your vision better it keeps your eyes healthy hmm? so due to not blinking the eyes what is the natural effect your eyes are going to uh, you know the water will start coming out so that is uh, but natural uh <clears throat> initially you have to put little bit of effort but as uh, it is mentioned in the post that focusing is important but at the same time we should learn the act of defocusing so to make your awareness one pointed concentrated followed followed by defocusing relaxing let your awareness expand let go that action that skill need to be developed 
within ourselves. So that we will see during the practice. So I would suggest that before starting, you go and wash your eyes. So how you're going to wash your eyes? With the cold water, you're going to make uh, like cup pose of your palms, like this uh, slight dig in this. And you're going to uh, take cold water into your palms, immerse the eye into the water and blink for a few times. And then do the same thing for the uh, next eye and then come back. Okay, so quickly you can go wash your eyes with cold water and while practicing uh, the Trataka, you please remove your glasses. So even I will go wash my eyes and in a minute or two, we'll start with the practice. So I have kept a small stool and I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to sit one arm distance from the candle. So keep your candle matchbox with you. Okay. See to it, the candle is at eye level. Yes, and one arm distance. We'll start with eye exercises first. While doing uh, all the practice, please take off your glasses. Don't look at uh, the candle right now. So you can turn to the side while doing eye exercises. So keep your back straight. Let's start with eyeball movements. So you're not going to move your head, but only your eyeballs from right to left. Okay. So move your eyeballs to the right side. Follow the whole path and move them to the left. Again to the right and to the left. Again to the right and left. Continue a few more rounds. And back to center. Now move your eyeballs up towards the ceiling, down towards the floor. Again, move them up and down. Move them up and down. Seven, eight, nine. Back to center. 
Now diagonal movement. So move your eyeballs to the right corner up and left corner down. I'm going to draw a diagonal line with your eyeballs and down. Right corner up, left corner down. Seven, eight, nine, Back to center, left corner up, right corner down, left corner up, right corner down, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At the center. Now rotation. Three rounds clockwise movement. So move your eyeballs to the left, up, right, down. Left, up, right, down. Left, up, right, down. And reverse. So from right side, move them up, left, down. Right, up, left, down. Last round. And then gently close your eyes. Feel your eye muscles being used. Feel the eyeballs. Feel the stimulation to the optic nerve. Feel the nice sensation throughout your eyes. Feel the strengthening of the eye muscles. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Relax. Relax your eyes. And with few blinks, open them. So it's same way, like uh, you cannot maintain an asana or a posture uh, if you have already, uh, you know, strengthened, toned or used all the muscles. If they are agile, if they are, uh, you know, flexible, then you can easily maintain a posture for a long period of time. Of course, by practicing asanas, it helps to make your muscles flexible and strong. Similarly, before fixing your gaze on one point, it is important to first use your eye muscles. So do eye exercises before starting Trataka practice. Okay. Now you can face the candle, uh, put the flame on and you can switch the lights in the room. So uh, make it dark. So I'm going to keep a little bit light in my room. Is it too much? So there are going to be uh, four steps. four steps in Trataka. So keep one arm distance from the candle. You can sit on a chair or on the floor in cross leg position. Now first, close your eyes. Place your palms on your knees, back straight. The first step of Trataka is effortless gazing. 
So with few blinks, open your eyes and look at the floor. Do not directly look at the flame. Look at the floor. Slowly shift your vision at the base of the stool or table, wherever you have placed the candle. Slowly shift your vision upwards at the base of the candle. And slowly shift your gaze following the candle, looking at the flame of the candle. If you want, you can blink your eyes for a few seconds. Start blinking them 10 to 15 times consciously. Now, as per your capacity, whenever you are ready, you effortlessly look at the flame of the candle. Tell your mind that you are not going to blink your eyes. Even they get blinked automatically, that's fine. But try to use your willpower. Fix your gaze, fix your eyes at the flame. You can do up to 10 seconds. Whenever you feel any discomfort, any strain on the eyes, you can gently close them. So take your time. Do not overstrain. Do not overforce yourself. And whenever you feel, you can slowly close your eyes. Once you close your eyes, you might see the internal image of the flame, of the candle. That's how powerful the technique is. The image is saved, is registered into your optic nerve. It reflects on your retina. And once you close your eyes, you can clearly see the image. So every time you close your eyes in that dark space, you are still focusing your mind. Maybe after some time, the internal image disappears. If it's still there, you can fix your gaze, your eyes on the internal image. Now we do press and release palming. So brush your palms on each other. At the end of every step, we are going to use different types of palming. As it's a cold weather, it will take time to make your palms really warm. So brush them. and place them on your eyes, the palm region. Gently press around your eyes, not on your eyes. Press and release. Inhale, press. Exhale, release. Inhale, press. 
exhale, release. Last time. Press, release. And gently remove your palms, place them on your knees. So we have done with the first step of Trataka, effortless gazing at the flame of the candle, followed by focusing effortlessly on the internal image. Now we are going to start with the second step, that is intensive focusing. With few blinks, open your eyes and look at the floor. Do not look directly at the flame. The base of the stand, base of the table, stool, whatever you have. Slowly shift your eyes at the base of the candle. Now slowly shift your eyes along the candle at the top of the candle. Now you're fixing your eyes at the flame of the candle. Try not to blink your eyes. Let's make it little intense focus. Try to look at the center of the flame. You might see a small white spot, so sorry, black spot. Make it more one pointed. Try to look at the wick of the flame and ultimately fix your gaze at the tip of the wick of the flame. Whenever you feel, you can gently close your eyes. After intensive focusing, may it, may it be for a few seconds, that's fine. You have used your willpower, you have put in your efforts to fix your eyesight at one point only removing all the other objects, things. As you have closed your eyes, you might feel the tears are coming from your eyes, giving a good wash to your eyes, improving your vision, making your eyes healthy. Again, you can focus, concentrate in the dark space with your closed eyes. If nothing appears, just visualize the dark space. Focus on the internal image. If 
if there is any strain, discomfort in your eyes. Now we are going to do constant pressure palming. So once again, brush your palms on each other. Try to make them warm enough. And place your palms on your eyes, giving constant pressure around your eyes, not on your eyes. Let your eyes soak, bathe into that dark space, darkness. Relaxing your eyes. Once you feel your eyes are cooled down, relax. You can release the pressure. Relax your palms back on your knees. So we have finished with the second step of intensive focusing. Now we are going to start with the third step of Prataka, defocusing. Whenever you are ready with few blinks, open your eyes, look at the floor, look at the base of the stool, slowly shift your vision at the base of the candle. the top of the candle and ultimately fix your, your vision, your eyes on the flame of the candle. Again, try not to blink your eyes. And now we are going to defocus. Look at the beautiful aura around the flame. You might see the shadow of the candle. Small, tiny light particles around the flame. Try to relax your eyes by defocusing your vision. Try to gather all the information about the flame of the candle. Look at, look at its shape. Shape of the flame. Color of the flame. Size of the flame. Let your consciousness be expansive. As you defocus, as you expand your awareness, you can see the bigger and bigger aura around the flame. It's effortless. very relaxing. Whenever you feel, you can again close your eyes. 
As you close your eyes, once again, you can focus your internal gaze, your mind on the image. Now once again, we will do palming. So brush your palms, make them warm enough. We are going to use again constant pressure palming along with humming breath, that is Brahmari Pranayama. So place them on your eyes, give constant pressure around your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in. Last time, breathe in. So you drop down your palms back on your knees. After the primary pranayama, experience the deep silence. You have tried to withdraw your senses, especially your eyes. That withdrawal helped your mind to become one-pointed. To remove all the chitta vikshepas, mental, emotional distractions. Making it silent, calm, peaceful, without any activity. Internalize your awareness. Witness the deep silence, deep ocean of silence within. And remind yourself of your true nature. That is the blissful state of your mind. Satchit Ananda.
with your three fingers, index, middle, and ring finger. Give feather-like massage over your eyes. Gently tap these three fingertips on your eyes. Then move your fingertips around your eyes in circular motion, giving gentle massage around your eyes. And drop your arms back on your knees. Just listen to the Shanti Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudat Chate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Take your both hands on your lower back. Catch hold of your left wrist with the right hand. And surrender yourself to the Ishvara. Let go. Bow down. Inhale slowly come up. Relax your hands and with few blinks, slowly open your eyes. So with this, the practice of Prataka is over. You can uh, blow the flame of the candle. Just put the light on. So, uh, if you have any questions about the practice or if you want to share any uh, thoughts, experience of the practice, you are more than welcome. Totally amazing, Ketke. It's like really very soothing and very focusing the mind at one place. Yeah. And honestly, nothing else in the mind came during that time. It was just the flame, your yeah. voice, and um, the internal, like the focusing what we were doing. It was truly amazing. Just had one query about the last step of defocusing, exactly. Mm -hmm. So defocusing is like we are taking our attention back from the flame or like, I mean, what, what exactly? Yeah. Like so what we started with is focusing uh, effortless focusing at the flame. The next step was intensive focusing. So we almost tried to focus at the center of the flame. Mm -hmm. But defocusing means now you're trying to uh, defocus your vision and looking around the flame, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. the shape, the size, the tiny light particles around. Yeah. So here you are not actually uh, trying to focus your vision but defocus. Mm -hmm. So there is the uh, way you can 
relax your vision and by relaxing your vision you're relaxing your mind okay good and specifically at that moment it can bring all your uh, suppressed emotions or thoughts or feelings at the surface and it gives you vent outlet to release it mm. okay okay perfect yeah so it should act at deeper level but this can happen with regular practice okay and like how much time in the week can we do this like to can practice it every day if you can okay. but uh, if it is difficult especially uh, before going to bed trataka is advised because uh, anxious mind restless mind uh, because till the last moment mm. we hit the bed <laughs> we go to the bed our mind is busy our mind wants to do so many things till the last minute we try to switch off and when we go in the bed it's really hard to switch off because our brain is still working our mind is still working so trataka is a best practice to take out all the unwanted stuff unnecessary things all the distractions as yogic term is chitta vikshepas because any tiny slightest you know uh, thing can distract our mind our mind is so now vulnerable so this vulnerability can be handled through this powerful effective technique of trataka it instantly calms down your mind it removes all the distractions and now your mind is ready for the quality sleep even 8 hours of deep sleep cannot give you enough relaxation that's what you know yoga says uh 45 minutes of good shavasana deep relaxation technique can give you quality sleep not even 8 hours of sleep can give you even trataka defocusing is important because there you relax there you let go so to get that quality relaxation deeper levels of relaxation is only achieved through yogic practices because you are totally aware at that moment you are in the present moment in this moment and that gives you the best form of relaxation otherwise our mind is always in the past or in the future never in the present moment it's very hard to keep it here in the now in the present moment okay so you can practice trataka uh, every day or once in a week whichever way you can uh, and especially before going to bed or in the evening time if it is hard just before going to bed you can do in the evening time yeah okay yeah. um thank you for a wonderful session again you know really really relaxing my question was um you know like as you have said already you know it's helpful for the eyes as well because you know we are all always on the devices you know mobile or computer and it leads to eye strain so yeah. is this practice beneficial for um relieving that strain or things like dry yes. eyes for example that you know yes. yes so for any eye defects any eye related diseases you can practice trataka only as i have said for cataract or uh, maybe due to diabetes if there is you know any uh, blur vision or you know eyes you, if you have uh because flame is a very strong object so you can go for a little milder object like uh maybe a flower or you know deity the idol of a deity anything you can keep only the thing is your eyes should fix on one object that is the and instead of taking you know any random object i would always recommend to have something auspicious so even flame flame is nothing but 
uh, the fire god, isn't it? It is uh, in fire. It is the representation of Lord Vishnu. So if you're focusing on fire or the flame, nothing but you're focusing on Lord Vishnu. And just one more question then, like, you know, some people will get tears in the eyes, obviously, after the practice. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, with like I'm recently experiencing dry eyes. So I felt like in one of the eyes, I felt quite a lot of like, you know, mm. the tears and wetness. But on the other, it wasn't the case. So, okay. Um, should I keep practicing this? Yes, other? yes, yes. Keep practicing it, you know, uh, differs maybe eye to eye. Uh, but sometimes maybe next time you practice, the eye where, which you're feeling dry that might get tears eventually so it's like a na natural washing of your eyes thank you yeah. anything else okay so thank you for joining and um, in the chat box, you can find uh, my Atman page, Atman Yoga Consultancy Facebook page, where I always share uh, any upcoming event or session or whatever courses uh, I'm offering through Atman Yoga. So currently from uh, next Sunday, I'm going to start with Vedic chanting level one course. So I teach Vedic chants as well. Um, I have level one, level two, level three. Uh, courses of Vedic chanting. So in this session, you must have heard, uh, I have chanted these mantras in Vedic style. You, whenever a Purohita or a Bharji or a Guruji comes to perform any ritual, they always chant the mantras in a systematic order. There is a uh, oral tradition in our culture and that is maintained just by chanting or teaching from guru to shishya. That's how that parampara has come down till now. And uh, in level one course, I ch ch teach Dasha Shanti mantras. Uh, if you do that course, you understand the basic rules of Vedic chanting uh, and you learn few Shanti mantras, followed by level two, where I teach uh, one of the part of Upanishad, that is Taitriya Upanishad. So Bhrugu Valli, I teach in that uh, course. And in level three course, uh, which is a bit advanced, uh, Purusha Sukta and Shri Sukta. So that I teach in level three. Also, uh, from this Saturday, I'm starting with yoga therapy for back and spinal health. So if you have got any issues, complaints regarding your back, because I know nowadays everyone is working constantly, uh, sitting in front of the computer, most of the hours spent on the chair. So we really don't take out time for ourselves to practice or to do yoga. So in chair itself or with the help of chair, uh, especially in that yoga therapy course, I'm going to teach you various exercises which can be done in a sitting position or with the help of chair during your working hours. So if uh, you feel that it is something for you, you can always contact me uh, or you can share that post uh, with your colleagues, with your friends who might be suffering through back pain, sciatica, slip disc, uh, spondylosis, any work-related issues with the back. Okay, so these are the two courses coming up. And um, from this year, I'm starting this monthly practice series. So my uh, aim is to have some kind of such practice session uh, on uh, each month on the last Sunday, okay? So I will come up with some other practice session in the next month, the last Sunday of February, and I will keep you updated. In order to get all these updates, you can always uh, visit my Facebook page or there is a website as well. In the chat box, you will get it. And uh, you can share these uh, practice sessions with the updates about this with your friends so i want more and more people to join these monthly 
practice sessions so that uh, this, this will help you basically to overcome your any you know uh, physical ailments or mental issues and somehow yoga can become a vital uh, or important place in your daily routine so atman yoga consultancy's aim is to make yoga or yogic practices part of your daily routine not only on mat but in various ways and that's what we are going to explore through these monthly sessions so thank you for joining in today and do hope to see you back next month yeah yeah, yeah. kitki what is the timing for that uh, yoga for spine and back on it's saturday the, yeah saturday morning 8:30 to 9:30 okay and it's for 10 10 weeks uh, so each saturday for 10 weeks so 10 okay. saturdays yeah Yeah. and uh, what is the details for the vedic chants like sunday yeah and sunday uh, 11 to 12 it's starting from this sunday okay and uh, i will send you details of that because you are on my whatsapp i can send you details yeah okay yeah all right then thank okay. you very much. thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Bye. bye bye bye